Fishing in Minecraft is actually pretty amazing. You can get enchanted books, bows, saddles, name tags, and more. This is the ultimate Minecraft 1.18 fishing guide, and we're going to look at the best way of doing all of these things right now. Now, how do you actually fish? All you need is two string and three sticks. Go into the crafting table just like this and put them in a pattern like this. That'll give you a fishing rod and basically you want to cast it out in what's known as deep water. That means that from the fishing bobber there'll be at least two blocks in every direction that are either water, lily pads, kelp, kind of waterlogged blocks like that, or air. So that you couldn't let's say have like a waterlogged slab, but you could have something like this. That means that you'll get treasure loot if it is in what's classified as open water. If it's not, you'll still get fish and you'll still get junk items, you just won't get treasure. Then there'll be particles around there like there just was. We'll right click and we'll reel in a fish and we'll do that one more time here. But you can see when we have the bobber out here, there's all these particles around it that kind of are these little blue dots around here. That means that the fishing rod is working and there'll be like a little stream of blue particles like this there. Bobber will come down, we'll right click and we'll get ourselves a fish. So that's kind of the basic way that fishing works. Now the question is what do you actually obtain from fishing to make it worthwhile? Well, there's three different types of items you could get. You could get a fish item, a treasure item, or a junk item. Now some of the junk items in my opinion are actually pretty good, like let's say the leather here or the lily pad. That's actually the only way of renewably getting lily pads, and even something like a bone would be pretty good. These are all listed in most common to least common, so this would be more common than let's say this. So with a normal unenchanted fishing rod, you have an 85% chance of getting one of these fish items, you have a 5% chance of getting one of these treasure items, and you have a 10% chance of getting one of these junk items. So basically let's say we fished and it was a 5% chance, now within that 5% chance that we had, there would be an equal chance for any one of these items here. But that's only for the treasure loot, for these uh, some items are more common than others, and for the fish, uh, it's generally you'll mostly get cod, then salmon, then pufferfish, and only about 2% of the fish that you get will be tropical fish. Also, location actually does affect fishing, so if you fish in a jungle of any type, of water in that jungle, you'll actually have a chance of a junk item of bamboo, and in Bedrock Edition, you'll actually have a chance for cocoa beans as well. I think they added this because when bamboo was first added to the game, if you wanted to get some in, let's say, an old world, then you could get yourself the bamboo without having to explore too far out to find a bamboo jungle, which I think is kind of a nice little feature. Alright, now I said that's with unenchanted. If you have luck of the C3, and it'll be the same with this for 2 and 1, just less so, but with luck of the C3, you have an 84.5% chance for a fish item, so it's basically the same with fish but the chances of treasure and junk are almost switched, so there's only a 4.2% chance, not even 5% chance of junk with luck of the C3, compared to 10% with no luck of the C at all. And then there is an 11.3% chance, so actually over 10% chance, to get a treasure item if you have luck of the C3 compared to 5% chance without. Then on average, you'd get one of these six items for every nine times you fish, which is pretty good considering that things like saddles are only renewable through fishing, and a lot of these other items are very hard to get any other way. In fact, one of the main reasons why people tend to fish in Minecraft is because you can actually get mending books as a chance of one of the books you get with this treasure here, and what's really cool about that is that's the only way of getting mending renewably outside of villager trading, so if you don't have a mending villager then you can get mending that way. Now what are actually the best enchantments for a fishing rod? Well of course you're going to want unbreaking on there, you're also going to want mending. Now what's cool is that when you fish, fishing actually gives you XP, which means that if we enchant our fishing rod with of course the unbreaking but also the mending, what the mending will do is it'll make it so that when we fish and we get that experience from drawing in a fish, that will mend the fishing rod from any damage it took from our fishing. Which means you can infinitely have the fishing rod have its full durability if you continue to fish without let's say having tons and tons of items in your armor slots or something that would be taking that mending up. If you don't have that, it should always be refilling itself, which is awesome. We also have two fishing rod specific enchantments, so we have luck of the C3 which we kind of just discussed the effect of that there. It just makes treasure items a little bit more common and junk items a little bit less common. We also have lure 3. Now what lure does is that just as a fishing lure would in real life, it makes it so that the amount of time it takes for you to get a fish is less. So generally when you're fishing what it does is it has a random chance between 5 to 30 seconds to get yourself a fish. However, if you have lure 3 on your fishing rod, that changes it by 5 seconds less for every level. So if it's level 3 of lure, 
then what would basically happen is it would be between 0 to 15 seconds to have fish. Now you might say, well, couldn't it also do negative seconds? Because let's say it picked 5 seconds and it was minus 15. It actually can, but if it does that, it'll basically just re-roll the number so that it'll see if it'll happen. Um, because of course you can't have a negative number, so that is what Lure 3 does. And if we put out our fishing rod with Lure 3, then generally we'll have about twice as quick fish. In fact, there's one right there. And of course, again, we do get experience from fishing as well, which would mend this. So this is your perfect fishing rod. Maybe you could name that if you want, whatever you'd like. But those are the best enchantments on it is Unbreaking 3, Mending, Luck of the Sea 3, and Lure 3. All right, now maybe you've tried fishing in Minecraft, but you find it's a little bit hard to reel the fish in on time. It's actually interesting because this is easier to do in Java Edition than it is in Bedrock Edition, of course. Unfortunately, in Bedrock Edition, the amount of time you have to get the fish once it's been kind of the bobber's gone down, is only half of a second. In Java, it's between one and two seconds. So when this goes down, we actually have over a full second to grab that. Whereas in Bedrock Edition, you don't. You just want to put out your fishing rod, and if you look at the bubbles around there, kind of these little blue particles, you'll start to see this blue stream of particles come near the rod. And the trick to always get the fish is when you see that come near, the second that goes underwater, you want to right click. Not before it goes, but the second it goes under the water, then you want to right click, and you should always get the fish. It's nice because in a lot of games, fish is complicated and difficult to do but in minecraft it's actually quite simple now also when you're fishing as well as of course having this radius around the fishing bobber here which let's say the fishing bobber is on this block we need two blocks for above it we need two blocks of water below it and we need two blocks of water on either side which would make this a five by five by five by four so there's two blocks of air above and below that's the four and the five of course is the block the bobber's on then two to the left two to the right two up and two down you can actually fish when you're right above your rod just like that as well something else you need as well though is exposure to the air so this needs to be exposed to the air or it'll take twice as long for the fish to come over to your rod. Also, if it's raining, it'll be 20% less time for the fish to come to your rod, which means let's say that you want some quick fish. It might be a good idea to do that while it's raining. A good trick to always know as this little particle stream that comes to the rod is really important is to make sure that under your options and under your video settings, that your particles are not on minimal. Now on decreased, you should see the fishing particles show up around there and you can kind of see them there. But unfortunately, if your particles are on minimal and you're fishing like I am right now, you'll see there's absolutely no particles here. And so it's really important to have those particles on all the way. So you'll know when to right click and get that bobber because it will bob down like you saw it did there. But it'll be a lot harder to see when it's time to do that. Here's something kind of interesting. A fishing rod's durability in Java Edition is only 64. However, in Bedrock Edition, it's actually 384. Meaning that if you have a fishing rod in Bedrock Edition, it'll last a lot longer than let's say in Java, also making mending very very vital for a fishing rod in Java, as your fishing rod would break after really only 64 uses, or maybe only double or triple that if you have on breaking 3. can also fish, being quite far away from the bobber, so if we put the fishing bobber out here, we walk far away, you'll see we can actually keep fishing, even with the bobber being so far away I even grabbed a fish from there, so you can actually be quite far away from the fishing rod like that but you'll see that the fish still comes to you even if you're quite far away from it. And it makes kind of something really funny like if you're really far to the side and above it and the bobber goes down there and hopefully it will soon and we can right click there, the fish will come flying right up at you which is just like this and you'll see the fish came flying right up there which is quite funny. Also, although Java Edition's fishing rods don't have much durability to them compared to Bedrock, a big plus of Java is that you can actually fish in your offhand just like this. You can see here I'm fishing in my offhand like that. It's actually kind of funny because it works literally just as well as it would in your main hand. So I'm not really sure why you'd want to do this, but you absolutely can. Maybe you could even have double fishing rods and that'd be kind of a funny thing to do. Now unfortunately you cannot use this to go double fishing rods just like this. You'll see if we go like this and switch it'll only have this be on one or the other if we have both out they just won't have both have their string out which is too bad so it would be kind of funny if you could double fish but either way it's kind of an interesting feature that you can fish from your off hands fishing rod an interesting little bit of trivia as well is let's say we fished with this fishing rod well that bobber is from this one but we could actually reel in with this rod and use the durability on this rod and let's say this was unenchanted here it would still have the effects from this fishing rod because that's what we reeled out with 
so I'm not sure how useful that really is. But you could certainly do that if you wanted, if you had a junky fishing rod and a good fishing rod. So you'd basically reel out with one, and then make sure to reel in with the one that's junk. So it's kind of an interesting little feature there. A lot of Minecraft players, when they think of fishing, also think of AFK fishing, and there's two models of AFK fish farms. There's the old model, which actually still works, and I'll show you guys how to use that here. But I'll show you how it doesn't exactly work how it used to. So to make one of these, you just break four blocks in a row just like this, and you put two chests in part of that there. You put in your hopper into the chest, then you put a fence gate on top of the hopper like that, put a heavy weighted pressure plate on top of there, then put a note block there right in front of this hole, just like that. Make sure not to break that like I did. Place your water bucket on the fence here and it'll pour in this hole here. Then you want to have a block on top of the note block here. You might need to shift to do this, just like that. Then put an iron trap door on the bottom half of this block here, and this can be any block, just like this. And now you've actually just made an AFK fish farm. Now of course you can put in more hoppers and more chests if you want, but that's kind of the main design. And how it basically works is you stand right on the edge here, not exactly in the water, but kind of right here. And you look at this and you kind of hold right click, well, holding it like that. You can see it kind of spams it like that, but it doesn't actually ruin the durability, and I can go into survival mode and show that. And that went down there and actually auto caught our fish. Now how's it doing that? Basically what it is is the bobber, when it comes to get a fish, it'll kind of dip down and that'll make it not be on the pressure plate, just like that. You can see this is very, very quickly getting ourselves tons and tons of fish. But there's a very sad problem with this. In Minecraft 1.16 they implemented a change where when you're fishing like this you need to be doing it in deep water or you won't get the treasure. However, a small fish farm like this is actually still quite good because you get yourself all the fish loot as well as all the junk loot, which as we saw includes things like leather and lily pads and sticks and string and bones and those things aren't actually useless and could certainly be nice to have on a farm. And if you're AFKing like this for let's say two or three days, so 24 or 48 hours, which is a lot of time, you will get yourself a considerable amount of leather, as well as an absolute infinity of fish, just an infinite supply of fish and food. So if you're just fishing for the food, these little AFK fish farms are still good, but they do not give you the treasure loot, which is kind of the main reason why people would do them. So people have made farms that kind of fix this issue, or somewhat fix it. So this is one of those farms, and this is designed by Shulkercraft. I'll put that in the description if you want to make this yourself, because there's no way I can make a tutorial on this. Uh, basically how this works is you would be standing right here, and then you'd kind of be on the edge of here, and you'd basically right click on the note block as you would with, let's say, the note block in the other design. And what'll happen is when we reel out just like this, so we're gonna reel out in the water, then we'll kind of right click on there. What'll happen is this thing will automatically go on and off and kind of reel in the bobber for us. I think we have to turn it on just like this, but it'll basically automatically make this reel in. The problem is this functions by a timer and not by a sensor, which means it's literally a random chance whether or not it'll reel in the fish. So it does work, but unfortunately the rate of this is so slow, you probably would be better off just manually fishing because let's say an hour of the old AFK fish farm would have given you more treasure loot than maybe six or 12 hours of this farm because it's so inefficient. However, if you do still want an AFK fish farm that gives you treasure loot, you could use this. And of course, the reason why this works is because we're fishing in the middle of what is the applicable amount for the treasure loot, because we have here two blocks of air above us on every side, we have the two blocks of water below, and we have that going in all these directions as well. And of course, you're standing up here and fishing down in the middle there. So there's this design as well. Now here's something a lot of people really don't know about. There's a lot of very interesting tricks around fishing rods I'm going to show you guys right now. Let's put out some blocks just like this. Let's say we want to grab one of these blocks right here. Well, we can do this with a fishing rod and not just have to go and grab it. We'll just right click and that fishing rod, if we can aim correctly, will actually link onto it. See, it's kind of linked on there. If we right click again, it'll fling that towards us at least a little bit closer. And if we're really close to this like this, we can kind of fling it up in the air just like that so it doesn't drag on the ground. We could like jump up like this and it'd fling even further. And we could move blocks and items around here just like that, which is actually pretty cool. And there's a lot of really interesting uses for this because you're moving the items just like that which I think is an awesome little thing to do, and it's really fun. It's also cool because that doesn't just work on blocks like that. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to move a mob, so we'll get ourselves a cow right here. Let's see, a cow spawn egg, just like that. And we'll put down a cow just like this, and let's say we want to move it. We don't have some hay. We can latch onto the cow here. We can get quite far away. Then we can kind of move the cow like this, and that doesn't seem to be moving it very much. But let's say we're at a different angle from it. We're kind of quite far up from it. And we wing it like this, it'll actually move very far up. In fact, the poor cow got hurt there. 
if we're quite far away from it, we can fling it very, very far distances just like that. Now what's also amazing is this works on players, so you could actually fling players very far. In fact, there's a really funny thing people used to do with Elytra, where they'd basically use fishing rods to fling themselves higher up in the air. There'd be two players, they'd kind of use that to get infinite Elytra rocket kind of boosting, but just with fishing rods, which is quite a funny thing. So you can use this winging ability on mobs and also on items. And maybe if you want to move something like a villager, maybe that could be quite useful since it can actually move these significantly far. You just want to be careful not to hurt them too much in the process. The nice thing about fishing in Minecraft is that it's actually quite quick. Now all this loot you see here with all these fish, all of these three saddles, this bowl, these two enchanted fishing rods, the name tag, the two leather, the string, and the tropical fish here, and even the bowl, were all gotten in only 10 minutes of fishing. So I timed myself doing 10 minutes of fishing just to see, well, how much fish do I actually get? And that is with the best bow, so that's Unbreaking 3, Mending, Luck of the Sea 3, and Lure 3. And I got myself a huge amount of fish, fishing rods, and loot, which is really cool. Also, a really nice thing you can do is you can fish with a basic fishing rod. And then when you get yourself a really nice enchant on a fishing rod you find through fishing, you can just kind of upgrade your rod as you go until you get the perfect fishing rod from fishing, or you could combine some of the rods that you find. And you can use that to slowly upgrade your fishing rod until you have the perfect fishing rod to fish with. Anyway, that was the Ultimate Minecraft 1.18 Fishing Guide. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the like button, subscribe, comment, share. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day. Goodbye.